Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be taking a look back at my sketchbooks from Senegal. Uh, I was very lucky when I was in college to have the chance to study at the University of Dakar on the west coast of Africa for about eight uh, months and I brought some blank sketchbooks with me and began filling them up with drawings. And um, let's think of this as the beginning of a series of videos in which hopefully I can take you through quite a lot of the drawings that I did uh, at that time. Now this first one was done uh, in pencil, uh, as some of the subsequent ones were, and as you can see it began to smear. Even back then it was smearing a lot, and those of you who have pencil sketch pads, uh, you probably have found that over time as the pages rub against each other, <clears throat> unless you've sprayed fixative or something, it can really start to smear a lot. Uh, this was sort of the courtyard of this apartment uh, where they had the, the students stay. Uh, this one is not quite so badly smeared, but this is the, the coastline. I guess I'll allow myself to sort of zoom in here and there. Um, again, uh, done in pencil, and uh, Dakar is right on the coast um, of uh, Africa, on the Pacific Ocean, and so there's just countless gorgeous uh, sea views. I used to go for long walks uh, there, and uh, this one I still kind of remember going early in the morning to this nearby street and uh, doing a drawing and uh, I was sort of sitting leaning against this wall and this guy came along and he was like, you shouldn't be leaning against this wall and I realized it was a wall where people very often would, uh, men would go and pee <laughs> against the walls. So he was right. I probably should not have had my back leaning against that wall. Um, again, another pencil drawing. Now, we used to be able to go up on the rooftop. I guess I'll zoom back a little bit here. Uh, we used to be able to go up on the rooftop of this uh, apartment building, and I'm pretty sure that's where I would have uh, done this drawing. I'm not sure if you can see the sort of uh, tiled. You know, uh, Dakar was colonized by the French, and so there's a lot of sort of colonial French uh, architecture. Uh, we'll probably see better examples of that. Now this is the, a big turning point for me because I got tired of the pencil uh, smearing. And so I got some kind of an ink pen, water soluble, you know, not waterproof, uh, the ink pens that I was using. Uh, as I would find probably on some of these pages, you'll see uh, some of the ink get damaged by water. Uh, but this was, in a way, a pivotal turning point for me. I turned to drawing uh, in ink directly on the paper and started to challenge myself uh, to see, can I do good uh, drawings in ink without uh, preparatory pencil work? This was this woman, I'm trying to remember, you know, this is a long time ago, but she was somehow associated with the program. Uh, I believe she was an American woman. Uh, but living uh, permanently in Dakar, and I think after lunch one time she sort of started nodding off. I think it was sort of a common thing to do, have your siesta, uh, Senegalese siesta. And you can see that she's wearing the, uh, the sort of beautiful cloth um, of, uh, of Senegal and uh, throughout Africa you see just gorgeous clothing. It's a shame that all these drawings are in black and white because you can't really uh, see the full beauty. But um, kind of interesting to see as I was beginning to figure out a way of doing ink drawings in a sketch pad um, that could be distinctive. Like here I decided to do a lot of cross hatching uh, in this area as these guys, again, sort of relaxing somewhere. Um, I can't remember the details of uh, the, the context of these situations, but sort of leaving this one uh, blank, it's sort of interesting to see uh, the contrast there. Very loose, you know. Uh, some of these lines, and that's something that I've always struggled with, is uh, trying to keep loose instead of tightening everything up all the time. Boy, talking about uh, <laughs> cross-hatching, I clearly went to town. Again, not strong memories of this location. I must have been taken somewhere where there was an interior courtyard. This sort of architecture reminds me a little bit of uh, Islamic architecture. I wonder if it was that kind of a place. Who knows? Um, but um, what? Pencil? I don't remember going back to pencil. I guess just for one time I went back to pencil. It must have been somewhere down on the beach. But already getting pretty smeary over time and I immediately uh, went back to my uh, 
ink drawings. Now it's in, you know it's interesting because I haven't really looked at these for a long time. It's interesting how many of these are this sort of post lunch resting period, and uh, you can see this guy leaning back. It was almost like a custom, I think. Uh, and I guess that was when I would pull out my sketch pad and try to do drawings. This one, let's sort of zoom in here because you know doing a quick sketch of someone's face is always a unique challenge. And here with just a few lines, I was doing my best to capture this man's uh, appearance. And I would say not too bad, not too bad, considering how little time I probably had. You know, I don't, I don't know if I would have asked the guy to pose for me. He might have got up and walked away shortly after uh, I did this drawing. Um, well, we've done about almost six minutes. Uh, uh, I think I'm going to keep going until we get to around eight or nine, maybe ten minutes at max. So let's just keep looking at these things. A lot of coastal drawings. I was never very far from the Pacific Ocean. Um, but this one is uh, emblematic of my uh, desire to always be doing a composition. You know, it's, uh, rather than putting these guys right in the middle, I push, you know, in my drawing, I have them way off. Uh, to the side. This probably would have been a better drawing if I had put more time into it. It seems almost a little unfinished to me. Now some of these things are not particular to uh, Senegal. I mean this could have been done anywhere. I was probably at someone's house or apartment and just uh, drew a bag that was sitting there. And you're going to see a lot of what I would call minimalist drawings, especially as it goes on. People walking down the street and so forth. Um, trying to capture things with as few lines as possible. This must have been some sort of a park, a public park, a man sitting on a bench. I can't say I'm too proud of how I did these trees. doesn't look like I had a whole lot of patience. But uh, one of the nice things about just going page by page is you're seeing warts and all, everything that I did. This one I feel like I must have been experimenting, or I wonder if I even collaborated with somebody these lines right here don't really look like my line work. So I wonder if I was sort of handing the drawing off to someone else. It's entirely possible, folks. Not strong memories of this. This is the 1987, I believe, 86-87, uh, that I, when I was a student. There's a little drop of water that begins, whoops, I'm sorry, there it is, a little drop of water that began to ruin <laughs> uh, the drawing, and I did learn eventually to uh, get a waterproof pen. And I, I was not using fancy pens at this stage, uh, fancy art pens, just any uh, cheap pen. Hand practice here, and you can see I needed all the practice I could get. Not the world's best hand. <laughs> did he have a broken thumb? Uh, but. You know, practice makes perfect, right? This one I drew uh, in a different direction for some reason. This has that sort of um, all the lines going diagonally in the same direction. I used to do a lot of this, especially when I was in high school. Seems like I brought it back for this drawing. Coming up on nine minutes, I think we'll do just a couple more pages and then we'll wind this one down and uh, maybe come back and continue the series. Uh, later on. Lots of pictures of people resting. I guess I, uh, it's, it was almost like um, having them pose for me without them realize that they were realizing that they were posing for me. Uh, this is a joke one that I probably made based on this guy Tesfa that I knew and so I did Shea Tesfa, the fancy restaurant maybe? And Flag was the name of the local uh, beer. I wonder if they still have that in Senegal now. Uh, I guess I could Google it and find out for you. Um, but uh, yeah, Tesfa was a good friend. I, I wonder what has become of him. Uh, I, he tried to um, get a visa to come to the United States and I believe that he succeeded eventually. This woman is selling uh, peanuts by the side of the road, and I'm, uh, this is a, a great tradition of Senegal, maybe other uh, countries in West Africa. They would uh, kind of roast the peanuts in sand. Uh, they would use sand as a way of maybe 
keeping them from burning while allowing them to still warm up. And there'd be like coal down there. And almost anywhere you went, you would, could find these women sitting by the side of the road. In my memory, almost always women, uh, could have been men, but um, mostly women anyway, uh, selling them. They would pull out some of the, you know, they must have had a strainer or something to get the peanuts out and into a bag for you uh, as a little snack. And maybe that's a good place for me to wind this down uh, with this little vision of uh, traditional Senegalese life. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe it inspires you to uh, get yourself a sketch pad, especially if you're going to a foreign country. Uh, you're going to take a lot of photos, but why not have a sketch pad and, and capture uh, some of this stuff. Let it inspire you artistically. And that is where we're going to end the video uh, for this week, um, but it is not the last. I'm going to continue. I don't know if I'll show each and every page uh, as we uh, go along in future videos, but uh, definitely there are many more drawings worthy of being seen. So let's uh, go ahead and wind this one down. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.